Yay Networks. Welcome to Greg Luganis is Alive, the podcast that challenges what you think you know. And uh, here we are. Uh, we had an incredible conversation with Dr. Rand McLean. And uh, it was amazing. I want to also introduce Beth Sinman, my friend and manager. Greg, I was delighted to be a fly on the wall for that conversation. Right? I, um, yeah, it's it was fabulous. You touched on a lot of different topics. And mm. I will say that um, when he starts talking about genetics, and uh, I was that really, really got me kind of pumped up because I'm sure, well, I know I shared this with you, but uh, on my Hashimoto's like thyroid journey, the one thing, like the first thing I did to really help myself because medical doctors like MDs were kind of clueless on that front um, mm. was to take my ancestry DNA testing and submit it for like a breakdown of I went crazy, actually. It's the foods that are better for me, the, you know, and nutrients, the ones that are not, that maybe aren't so good. Um, but also what diseases I'm prone to genetically, um, mm. you know, what I have markers for or whatever. So I right. knew what I, you know, what I could do to maybe kind of tweak my, you know, my quality of life and maybe longevity mm. of it and, and whatever. But the yep. yeah it, it's it's, it's that all was, about health span right it's, it's yeah it's health span, not <laughs> yeah. Life span. and you know it you know it brought to mind i i remember um my ex-husband um johnny said oh you know because of the copd or whatever that he's going to be on oxygen in 10 years mm. you know i only have 10 years and his thought was you know, he he was just destined to be on that oxygen was in 10, 10 years. My my thought was, oh my God, you have 10 years of healing. Right, right, of like work you could maybe do. If you change things, right, yeah. And yeah, I have siblings like that. I, I think we all do. <laughs> yeah, I do. I have do. siblings on that train. Yeah, and, and, and also addressing... Um, you know, issue of performance enhancing drugs mm. uh, is mm -hmm. that, you know, I, I have a totally different view on that. Uh, I think a part of that is my life experience because being diagnosed HIV positive in 88, six months prior to the Olympic Games, and then put on AZT. AZT is not a performance enhancing drug by any means, <laughs> it's quite the reverse. Yeah. And so, you know, and, and, uh, my journey with my HIV, you know, has been, um, you know, it's, it's, it's been at times a rocky road. And so a lot of the information, a lot of the, um, treatments that I benefited from, you know, would be in, you know, I, I would not be able to compete on a world-class level because of some of the treatments, um, because they are, you know, considered performance enhancing drugs. Right. And, and, but it's, it, 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 it all kind of leans into that quality of life, that yeah. health span. Are, are you healthy, energized, motivated, happy. You mm. know? Yeah. One of the, the things that it has sort of surprised me in a, in a way, uh, the whole community aspect to like, you know, of having like mm. a strong supportive community, uh, right. of people. And in a sense, it surprised me like how much that factors in, but, um, I enjoyed listening to this conversation. I'm excited. Yeah that it went on, you know, as long as it did, because you have an opportunity, you know, to bring the listeners these two different episodes with very interesting right. content. Yeah. So thank you for joining us. And we'll be back with Dr. Rand McLean right after this message. We're 
you know, similar generation and all that stuff. Uh, well, we are. How old are you? 60. 60. Okay, so I'm three years older than you. Um, you know, like one thing that, you know, having gone through a lot of the treatments and everything that I've gone through because of the HIV, you know, at one point I was wasting. We didn't know what was going on. And so we were, you know, doing uh, testosterone, we were doing um, growth hormone, you know, all this stuff. As it turned out, it was a, a fungal infection, my colon, and I got treated for that eventually. But as an elite athlete, I, okay, I want to see my records broken. I, and I, you know, people say, well, what if they're juicing or what if they're, you know, you know, that's fine with me. I want to learn what they're doing, you know, because spoken like leader, that. yeah, what's that spoken like because, a true athlete. Yeah. You're after yeah. excellence. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 I broke these records and I know what it felt like, but I want to experience that through somebody else. I want that, you know, I want to have that experience. And so, you know, I'm not like a lot of my, colleagues per se, you know, in, in that mindset, I don't care if they're juicing, you know, I, I, I want to know what they're doing, you know, and as elite athletes, we're guinea pigs, you know, <laughs> right. they're taking muscle biopsies. They're, you know, doing all these tests, oxygen intake, all, you know, all of that stuff with my HIV, it's, I've continued to be a guinea pig. You know, so any of the uh, performance enhancing stuff that, you know, they've demonized, you know, I, you know, a lot of those treatments have a benefit for people who might be dealing with cancer, might be dealing with HIV, you know, and what, what a perfect, you know, laboratory, you know, if, if it's done safely, I don't see any problem with that. I couldn't agree more. And, and I'd love to introduce you to, again, my friend Nelson, Nelson Virgil, because unfortunately back in that day, back in the 80s, it wasn't available. You had to riff, and that's what he did. He noticed these guys. He tells a story better than I do. Uh, but he realized, okay, he put two and two together and started using something called nandrolone which is an anabolic mm -hmm. steroid, but it's really, really designed for wasting disorders. And mm -hmm. um, I can't say I have every single patient of mine that has HIV on it because some are managing, you know, with the, with the new drugs, not the AZTs back in the day. Right, 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 right. And they're much better these days and wasting is not as big an issue. Mm -hmm. uh, but man, that's a no brainer if you think about it. I, I totally agree with you. And, and, why it's not more mainstream is a question you, you might ask me, and I'm just beating you to it, because I have no clue why it's not considered, because it just makes total sense. You put it together, you don't have to be a physician to, do, to, to connect the dots, right? And it's part right. of, you know, to take it a step further, uh, I, I briefly mentioned, when it comes to things like this, performance-enhancing drugs, which we would refer to an anabolic steroid typically, right? When you're 80 years old, 90 years old, and, you know, time has taken its toll you know things happen you're more frail the the, the fourth leading cause of of death in the united states right now is accidents mm. 90 year olds fall they break a hip right yeah that stat is misleading because i believe it's in the first three days if you don't die from the fall then you didn't die from the fall officially but you are in the hospital and you get hospital acquired pneumonia and you die of that well it was really the fall so I think fourth should probably be third or maybe even number two. And it seems nuts, and I'm hoping you'll agree with me, that we don't give a 90-year-old a safe, and that goes into a whole other world of, you know, we demonize the PEDs because Man. they wanted to make it seem scary so you wouldn't even think about it, but they're not scary. They do a great job yeah. when done properly. Mm -hmm. They can save a 90 year old's life. So, yeah, the proper application of this stuff is what I'm looking forward to as medicine changes and these, you know, these cats are out of the bag now. And, and for HIV, right. it's absolutely no brainer. Whatever we can use, as long as we're not robbing Peter to pay Paul, why wouldn't we want to use it? 
Right. And see, you know, during my era, you know, I was a part of the 1976 Olympic team. And so, you know, the, um, you know, accusations of, you know, drug use and cheating, that that's cheating and all of that, um, you know, the East Germans and hell, a lot of our athletes, that's where they had to get their their steroids, their anabolic steroids, everybody who was on the podium, you know, it was like, you know, they were doing, you know, some type of performance enhancing, uh, you know, treatments. And so, but, you know, a lot of our athletes had to go to East Germany to get the, you know, the steroids and, and, and that sort of thing. Um, but we've demonized it in such a way that it's, you know, everybody believes that it's cheating, you know. A philosophical question, right? When they say it's cheating, I mean, one argument that it was probably used by Lance Armstrong is, you know, if everyone else is doing it, how is my doing it cheating? With the idea being that, okay, yes, the rules state it's not allowed, but if everyone else is doing it, then, you know, you see through the rules, so to speak, and I'm mm -hmm. not saying, right or wrong, I'm just saying the argument, uh, and, and it's still fair play, which is the idea. I think a lot of it, and I'm speculating, but you know, I've listened to the banter for years, because mm -hmm. 76, by the way, was when the, the first year they banned it. You know, Al Order, right. God bless him, was setting world records, winning gold medals, you know, like you, yeah. uh, with the, the unfettered use of anabolic steroids and anything else they get hold of. I mean, he told me a story about a guy who was using adrenaline that was going to throw mm -hmm. and, and he, he scratched. I won't use his name, but it was one of his, his friends. He said, Al, if I could have made it out of my room, I would have thrown it a country mile, but he obviously used too much and uh, it didn't make it out. But these things were legal back then. I think right. the, you know, the, the protectionist government uh, sense, which again, I'm not putting it down. I understand where it comes from, but sometimes it overreaches, is to scare athletes into even using it to begin with uh, for the potential damage. And I, I said, I wasn't going to go into the weeds with this, but we, we've, we've misinterpreted a lot of, a lot of laboratory assays. For example, when we see someone on anabolic steroids and said, Oh, see, it's a bad thing. For example, to be very specific. And I, I know you can edit this out later for those who say, oh, this is way too deep for me, but AST and ALT, you're probably familiar with those enzymes, right? The, the, the assay is on, they call them liver enzymes. Those can be elevated, particularly when you use oral anabolic steroids. But they're elevated not just from the liver doing its job. The cells lies. They do their job. They lies, and they release this into the blood. You go, oh, wow. You're, doing, you're making the liver work too hard and maybe doing it too much so there's damage. Well, there are about a dozen other reasons why that can be elevated, one of which is the breakdown of muscle tissue. Hello? When you're on an anabolic mm. steroid, there's going to be more muscle turnover. So those enzymes tend to go up on their own anyway. Is it liver damage? Not necessarily, depending upon the mm. anabolic. It could just be that you have increased muscle mass. So there aren't always these negative side effects that have been attributed all these years to the various PEDs. I'm just using anabolic steroids as an example. Mm. So hopefully there'll be more education that comes with it and less fearfulness. Now, I can tell you, in medical school, how much time I was allotted for this type of thing? Zero, of course, because you you know you can't study what they want, don't want you to know. Ah, <music> oh, that yeah, I mean, and you know that just kind of you know blows my mind. Uh, I mean, even you know, like nutrition, you know, nutrition is huge. You know, if you think of your, uh, you know, food as, as medicine, you know, there's, you know, the whole studies that, you know, are talking about that. And then as a physician, as a doctor that you're going to go see, they haven't studied anything about nutrition. We got I mean, 20 minutes of it. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. Which is crazy, you know? Um, you know, and that's why I'm so kind of in alignment with a more holistic approach to care, health and wellness, um, and functional, you know, functional medication, you know, f functional treatment, um, you know, and also 
you know, with, with regard to, you know, performance enhancing drugs, you know, it's like, you know, we had, there's so many benefits. Why have we demonized, you know, this whole, uh, health and wellness, you know, pointing fingers, you know, and, and declared it cheating. I believe that it was cheating back in the day. It's like, oh, those cheaters, you know, but now where I'm at today, it's like, where did that belief come from? You know, it came from WADA. It came from the IOC. It, it, it's not my true belief. Well, this is fine because I used to argue, well, yeah, then I guess steak should be banned too, because that's an right. advantage to someone who's eating alfalfa sprouts and carrot juice. If you're trying to put on muscle mass and become the strongest Bulgarian lifter, you know, I mean, it's not going to happen. So yeah. where do you draw the line? Coffee. Coffee, we know, improves cognition, uh, you know, at least 20%. Um, yeah. You know, that, that's going to have some use in, in, uh, in just about anything, right? Who, who doesn't want to improve cognition? So why do we just pick this one and not look at some of the others? Mm -hmm. And we demonized it, like I said, because, you know, <laughs> we demonized coffee for a while, too. They said, you know, there were some bad things to coffee. Now we know better. Yeah. Why one got off easy and the other didn't, I couldn't tell you. Yeah. Well, I, I, I remember hearing, uh, you know, uh, you know, the talk amongst, you know, the Olympians is like, you know, well, if you have, you know, three cups of coffee, a chocolate bar and aspirin, it could throw you over the threshold for ca yeah. caffeine. And it's like, uh, what, you know, uh, you know, it, it, yeah, it's crazy. And then, um, you know, and then the whole, you know, pot, you know, THC and all, all that stuff, because it stays in your system a long time. Right. You know, and so it's just like, you know, so, some friends, you know, it's like, well, you know, we, we can't smoke pot, you know, because that, you know, but I don't see that as a performance enhancing <laughs> drug. You know, it's crazy. Usually you're not going to jump off the couch and go do your spreads for that day if you just smoked marijuana, right? So how is that? Right, a yeah. <laughs> it's like, how is that a freaking <laughs> advantage? It reminds me of that poor woman who got disqualified in the, the speaking of sprints, um, I'm not going to remember her name, uh, but she was an American member and, and she, she did very well, but they found THC in her system and said, nope, breaks the rules. It's a oh, shoot. drug or a banned drug, whatever. Yeah. A banned drug. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Which is crazy. You know, I, I, I don't get it. I mean, I think that, you know, with all the research that's being done, I think we can, we can, you know, re-examine those things. You know, I, I mean, so. yeah. I mean, the beauty of the internet is we're spreading the word. I mean, like I said earlier, the cat's out of the bag. So the more the information gets disseminated and I, and I have to say, you know, I, I'm not the Buddha, but I definitely my one of the major purposes of my writing the book was simply to get the word out, because yeah. you don't know what you don't know, and 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 right. um, you know again the beauty of the internet is on the one hand you can dig it up, but the other is it can be very discouraging because unfortunately there's so much out there now that is bogus. I mean, right. if you go on Instagram these days, you know everyone's an expert now. I mean, <laughs> look yeah. at COVID. Everyone was a COVID expert overnight and the same thing right. in, in, in sports. So it, it does make the, the waters a little murky, but I think that'll clear up. And eventually again, being the eternal optimist, uh, when, when all the information is out there, then I think it'll be easier to convince the powers that be to, to, to let up and, and re-examine and go, Hey, wait a minute, let's reclassify yeah. some of this stuff. Let's change the rules. Let's be smart about it. Yeah. I mean, cause that's, that's what I'm challenged with for, you know, for whatever reason I've really gotten, uh, you know, entrenched in the whole, you know, transgender issue, um, specifically X, Y, female competing, in, you know, uh, competing, uh, as women. Um, and it just like, there's the problem is the IOC lied, you know, they lied that they that they, the numbers that they came up with, with testosterone levels, those were just random numbers. There was no research behind them. Oh, and it fluctuates so much. I mean, when you look at some of these rules, uh, it's laughable. Like if you need a TIA, I think I call it TIA, uh, an exemption. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, therapeutic. Very, easy, use. very yeah. easily manipulate the numbers so that you show up, you know, two uh, positives, meaning too low. 
Uh, mm-hmm. that, that's a joke. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Yeah. This, using yeah. that as, as a way to judge is, is ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, I think, I think what happened to me, uh, in 88 when, uh, you know, I was put on AZT and I was, you know, crawling to the Beth bathroom, um, having that experience and talking to many of my transgender friends, you know, in what they experienced once they started hormone therapy, it's like, you know, it's not the advantage that everybody's making it out to be, you know, having a testosterone wash at, you know, it, you know, going through puberty in your teens, then it's, it's, it's an unfair advantage, you know, and I, I think that's, that's a bunch of bullshit. You know, you can't take away the training, you know, you can't negate the training that's granted, but you know, there's, you know, there's changes in your body. There's changes that, that are happening. And I don't believe that it's the, uh, the advantage that everybody makes it out to be. I mean, we, with Laura Hubble, the weightlifter from New Zealand, um, a dear friend of mine, Kristen Worley, and I were concerned about her health, you know, because she tried to, you know, be at that level of testosterone. Um, she was transgender, XY female, competing in weightlifting. Um, at the Commonwealth Games, she tore her biceps tendon, or she had a major, major injury, uh, basically because the body wasn't able to sustain itself, you know, and it was kind of eating itself up from the inside mm-hmm. you know so and and you know the i think the most important thing is the health and wellness of each individual athlete you know i think that's the most important you know th- thing that we can provide that's yeah, that's safety to me yeah that's that's the safety you know that's safe for athletes you know but anyways. Well, as you said, yeah. athletes are always going to be pushing the edge of the envelope. So we're the guinea pigs, whether it's self-administered yeah. uh, or not. Uh, yeah. That's where we find out where our limitations are. <laughs> right? Yeah. Was, yeah. I, it was funny because I, uh, I had a conversation with uh, Dr. Richard Swab, who is a neuroscientist who studies uh, gender identity and sexual uh, um, sexual identity. And um, that it happens in the first trimester. And he, he, he explained all of that. And he said, you know what? You're an elite athlete. You are not normal. Okay. You know, you're, you're like, I mean, Michael Phelps is not normal. Right. You, know? Yeah, you know, it's just like you're pushing that edge. And that's the nature of sport you know, is to push those limitations to, you know, push to see how far any individual can go, how high they can climb, how fast they can run. But it's a very important distinction because, you know, even if you look at us as living underneath the Gaussian curve, the elite athlete is far, far to the right. And to try and attribute the same anything very, very fraught with all kinds of things that can go wrong because yeah, right. they're, they're freaks of nature. Absolutely. You're, yeah. you're a freak of nature. You know I know, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a freak. I, I accept that. I embrace my freakness. <laughs> <laughs> so it goes back to, yeah, being your bo- best, uh, your own best health advocate and observing, uh, using the knowledge base we have, but tailoring it to yourself. Yeah. What, what works for you? Yeah. What, what works for me is not going to work for somebody else. Not necessarily at all. Yeah. Well, this has been incredible. Thank you so much for joining me. So how, how, how do people get, keep in touch with you and what you're doing, what you're up to, and your docu-series? That's really exciting to, to well, hear. I hope so. we're, we're, we're still cranking them out little by little. We have everything in the can, but as, as uh, well, your producer will tell you, it's the editing that's the key, right? Right. Uh, so yeah, thank you for mentioning that. That's coming out. And uh, we have a website, uh, www.psrpapasierromeomed.com. And we try and keep a lot of content there. And, and that's really the best way to, to get a hold of us if, if you want to. That's terrific. Well, congratulations on your book, Cheating Death, as well as really looking forward to your docuseries. It's well, going to be fascinating. 
it, it's great to bring this brought back a lot of memories uh, from back in the day in Miami, University of Miami. Thanks. Oh, for that's wonderful. Yeah. Old, old suntan you, right? <laughs> 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 well, thank you so much. Thank you, sir. Until next time. Namaste. Yay Networks.